Alrighty, so with our ships ready to go, let us board and give Leviathan a piece of our minds. Hope you bought those motion sickness bands. He's waiting for us. Oh, he's fast. I love how our ship is, is nothing but the platform. <laughs> I'm coming for you. they're giving instructions to, to somebody else who is apparently new to this fight by the way this fight is actually a little bit different from the other primals um, you can see like the water is like purple below us I'm assuming that's a reflection of the corrupted crystals on that device down below but yeah no more just big round arena although this one is you know square but stinks about this fight is the music. It is very lackluster. So yeah, unfortunately we don't get to fight him underwater. Which is kind of poopy, but limitations and all that, you know. Can't expect everything. Not like we can breathe underwater. Here's where things get interesting. He tries to sink us! But thankfully our ship is very buoyant, so we don't have to fight with that. Now his head and his tail are actually separate. They will share the same HP pool. However, the head will reflect all f uh, reflect physical attacks and the tail will reflect magical attacks. So you need to keep that in mind. And he'll summon Sahagin to come out and try to beat you up but they're no big deal see he kind of has a small head that's my one big disappointment about him now thankfully the ship is well platform ship is equipped with adequate railing so we don't risk actually falling off this thing which is good Totally awesome. But yeah, I find it interesting that they even split up his hitbox. And I thought I was in cleric stance that whole time, but apparently I wasn't. That's alright, easy enough problem to fix. That was some pretty puny wave you unleashed on me, Leviathan. So yeah, he'll do that too. And he'll summon these little guys. Whose sole purpose 
is to drain the power from your corrupted crystals. You don't want this. Because remember, we actually need those to dampen his power. Other than that, we are, if not for that, we are completely at his mercy. You can actually see the conversion rate on the side there. Don't die, me tank. Don't die. I'll be okay. he's not very stealthy and you know leaves a trail of water in his wake wherever he goes to signify where he's gonna be so Pooh and you Leviathan you do not have the elephant of surprise here not one little bit and I'm totally attacking the wrong one but that's okay yeah as you can see I'm getting hit by my own tax here so eventually, once these uh, the converter has received sufficient enough power from the crystals again, it's now operational and we need to hit the on switch. Look at that, a pretty shield for all of us. I had that barely tickled. So yeah, if you don't have enough energy or flip the machines on switch in time, you're screwed. See, not falling off. Uh huh. And now the real music starts. It's kind of a disappointment that it takes all this time to build up because he's at 38% health. I mean, like, the fight's almost over by now. Also, he can shoot darts at his tail. Yeah. I want to be able to do that. And more, you guys. Ugh. Go away. I have bigger things to deal with over here. I love how the, the, the sky is all dark and gloomy too. I might want to get out of the way. I'm totally going to get hit by that, but that's okay. It's too busy looking at the pretty backgrounds. Leave me alone. <laughs> Nighty night, bro. Uh, can you stop spazzing out, please? Thank you. Well, that was rather simple. Unfortunately, no loot for us, though. Tear. Nothing at all. Not even a scale for our efforts. Nothing. Nothing! That's quite alright. Maybe we've taught those Sahagin a lesson to not mess with us. And apparently everyone reported back to the command center. Okay, let's go. Hopefully everyone else made a lot of that mess okay. Hello again, Sergeant. I would like to rendezvous with my friends. Um, are you floating with me, sir? Hooray, everybody's here. Well, long story, yeah.
Ken, can we have some cocoa? Or coffee? Or cookie? Or cakes? Lilo Minsons are sworn to strive till sea swallows all. And swallow all it would have had Leviathan prevailed. That we still strive now, we owe in no small part to you. Okay, so instead of all that, we get a congratulations. Okay, works for me. For the first time, you have delivered Limsa Lominsa from the wrath of a primal. Never has our nation known a stouter ally. On behalf of my people, I give you my humblest thanks. High five? Bro hug? Bro fist? Something? Anything? Tis no? That okay. I give thanks to old Mistbeard, too, for his fine solution. Whatever else he may have been, tis clear he was a resourceful soul. Would that I had a man like him in my service. Oh, oh I see you smirking over there. Before I set foot in these lands, I had no inkling that the people of Eorzea contended with such mighty foes. Suffice it to say, their existence came as something of a shock, as did the idea that they could be defeated. This experience has served to remind me of the vastness of the world, and the boundless potential of man. Hopefully you're not regretting coming over here. Though I am but a refugee in this realm, I would fain be of use to you in your fight. Know that I am tutored in one of the foremost combat arts of the Far East. It may seem outlandish to the enemies in the eye, but should any of your people care to learn, I would be pleased to finish it. And I will see to it that they are grateful. I have no doubt that your knowledge and skills will serve us well. Besides, your art is not so outlandish as you think. Would you not agree, Master Thancred? Not escapes your searching eye, Admiral. Do tell! Few are privy to this information, but Limsa Lominsa is home to a certain secret fraternity. Its members are trained in a form of combat not unlike your own. By my judgment, it should not be beyond such individuals to adapt to the techniques I witnessed you employing with such admirable deftness. I am heartened to hear this. I too noted a kinship between your style and mine own. Though it seemed to me that you fought differently in the beginning. <laughs> I, I suppose I did. What can I say? I'm a man of many talents. <laughs> Uh, don't elaborate on that, please. Thancred was once something of a scoundrel who fraternized with the criminal class in these parts. You stole her. You jest, of course. Busted! But for a chance encounter with Alfino's grandsire, he might never have left Limsa Lominsa, or received an education in Charlian, or taken up his post in Uldar, which is where he trained in the Blade, lest you wonder. Minfilia, please! Thrown under the bus! <laughs> it would seem there is more to you than meets the eye, Master Thancred. Lady Yugiri, I am told that you and yours came to Eorzea seeking permanent resettlement, and that many domains have since been engaged as frontier hands at Revenant's Toll. Moderna is many things, but a place of refuge it is not. Know that I would like nothing better than to furnish your people with a new home here on the Minson soil. Alas, wracked by instability as we are, our nation is in no fit state to take you in. Yet I'll not have it said that we turned a blind eye to your suffering. Until such time as we can do more, I pledge to send provisions. Hooray! We are in your debt, Admiral. I realize that it scarce qualifies as repayment. But if it please you, I shall set about sharing my martial knowledge with your people. Okay, apparently this is later. 
Nice, nice guy out there. Oh, hi, Estola. So, will we kick everyone else out of the room? Okay. The better not to spoil the festive mood. History repeats itself, Admiral. As the kobolds did before them, the Sahagin resorted to summoning their god over a territorial feud. They acted in self-preservation. We didn't even do anything to them this time! Like, nothing was said! I mean, with the kobolds, you know, we actually, uh, it was mentioned that, oh, crap, we, we kinda did, you know, uh, fire the first shot in there. Uh, but the Sahagin, nothing is ever said in any of that, so, yeah. It may be that the Sahagin initiated this particular clash. See? But how it begins does not interest me so much as how it ends. I have not forgotten our conversation, Yashtola. I am aware that man bears part of the blame for the primal's existence. Nor am I ignorant of the Sahagin's reason for acting. They sought to secure a place to breed and multiply that their kind might survive. Self-preservation, as you say. But we have as much right to live and thrive as they. If our own survival is threatened, are we to lay down our arms and welcome oblivion? Nay. And so you kill, that you might live. Yet if living is a right, then that right belongs to all peoples, be they men or beastmen. I'll not deny your reasoning. But when a storm gathers, it falls to me to see my people safely through it. That is my duty, and I shall do it. As must we all, Admiral. Stay the course then, but know that it will lead to no good end. Man has ever put himself first and foremost. To justify his actions, he clads himself in the armor of righteousness though it be a fancy of his own making. In this, mayhap the Garleans and we Domans are not so different. Eorzea has become as a raging sea. If we are to keep our heads above the waves, we cannot scruple to drown the man next to us. When hopes of coexistence founder, Strength must determine who has the greater right to live. Okay. So, um, a couple things about what just happened in those cutscenes there. I didn't want to interrupt too much of the dialogue, especially since Yuri's voice is a bit on the soft side and you can barely even hear her. But anyway, um, yeah, um, we get a little backstory on Thancred there, and, um, I do think it kind of serves to help explain a bit about him, too, because if you remember, uh, when we find out that he's been possessed by La Habrea, it, it was mentioned by the others, and you do see some minor evidence of it, like when he's, like, sitting there in the hallway, napping, and he's like, oh, oh, don't worry about me, you know, and whatever, so there is some foreshadowing that he's, uh, all tired in my, uh, my fairy is stuck in my hood. <laughs> um, but the others mention is because um, he's been working tirelessly uh, to replace the void that was left by Louis Swat. And now you kind of can, uh, it kind of makes sense why he would do that. Because if not for him, well, he'd still be pretty much a criminal on the street. So he probably felt, you know, he feels some sense of allegiance and uh, allegiance and um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? But basically, he's trying to, he's trying to, you know, repay, you know, even if it's been five years and the man is, you know, presumed dead, um, you know, kind of repay him for, for what uh, he did in the reform of, you know, um, of paying it forward uh, with the rest of the Scions and whatnot. So, so I kind of like that um, and whatnot. 
And in regards to what uh, Yestola and the Admiral were talking about, both have very good points, but I'm sort of more on the Admiral side on this one, and this is why. Granted, it, it is a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, and you have to be strong to survive, and sometimes conflict is inevitable, but that doesn't mean necessarily mean you have to sit there and take it, you know? You have to fight for your right to live. Um, it's one of the sad truths of the world, but it is a truth nonetheless. And of course, you know, she does mention, you know, well, technically the Beastmen have that right too, but she's missing one very important factor. The Primals serve nobody any good in the long run. They, they, they drain, you know, either perpetually from the land, and th their presence does just not bode well. I mean, I can I entirely blame, you know, the Beast Tribes for calling on their protectors when they're desperate? Uh, and on paper... Absolutely not. No. You know, as said, you know, they do have the right to protect themselves and they're young and, you know, fight for their right to survive by whatever means they have available to them. But, um, yes, all I see is, is, even though she doesn't directly say this, be like, ah, oh, well, the, the Beast Tribes are kind of right to summon their primals. Meanwhile, she's actively on a member of the team who's trying to stop them simply because they are a burden to the land. So where exactly do you stand on this, Justola? And I certainly don't see you actually trying to do anything about this. Like, to me, I'm sorry, she's not a bad character in her own right, and I do like that somebody is at least trying to play devil's advocate here and bring up that, you know what, you know, the good guys aren't always the good guys, and even when they are the good guys, they're not always the best guys. They're, you know, they're still flawed and whatnot. So, so I'm glad she represents that within the Scions, but again, she isn't actually doing anything to help the situation at all. She's all talk and she's no action. She's not even suggesting anything. She's just reprimanding people. And it, it's, again, it, it, it's fine to call people on their crap, but this isn't the first time she's done this. And until you got a better idea, um, you might want to cool it a little bit. I know a lot of people like Yashola, but frankly, for those reasons, I kind of don't. Again, she's not a bad character, but I I just don't like how she's not an active part of this. She's more just, you know, she's like Captain Hindsight or something. But anyway, uh, that little rant out of the way. Sorry, people who like Yashola. Again, she's not, as a character, she's not bad, but I just don't like her. I don't like how you're emphasizing certain words here, sir. Alright, so now we're actually going to, uh... Follow up on Lady Yugiri's suggestion. That she's like, hey! Uh, yeah, I'm pretty cool in these arts and whatnot, and uh, we find out that there are people even here all the way over in Aortia who have talents not unlike hers. And maybe we can get a little something out of combining forces. Maybe help her pay her debt and show us a little bit more and educate us about the the, the outlandish world that is Doma, maybe. I got you I've gave you a letter. Yes, that was me. <laughs> oh, hi! Indeed. <laughs> a 
Okay. No. Well, I think you would just work. How about you say a thank you to Alphano too? You know, he is the one who kind of um, befriended you in the first place. And kind of got the whole thing started off. Where is that boy anyway? said um she's gonna stay here and help train people um even though this is patch 2.2 2, uh obviously this is the start of what will be uh the introduction to the rogues guild and eventually the uh the ninja job class which actually didn't premiere till 2.4 i actually kind of find it kind of lame that they don't lock that class out until this progression in the story like basically i think you can do it as long as you're as long as you're level 10 like you don't even have to get to this point in the story which honestly i find stupid i mean the whole gameplay story segregation with the growth of mordona kind of makes sense i mean this is an mmo they can't exactly have a big city especially a bustling big end game city as this look different for two different players at the same time. And not even just two different players, but, you know, dozens and dozens of players at the same time. So that kind of makes sense. Um, but it would have been an easy thing to do to lock out the Rogues Guild until you actually hit that point in the story. So it's kind of a little crappy that way. But, uh... It is rather a shame, though, that you actually... That's the last that we'll be seeing of Roal. She isn't actually part of the Rogues Guild, uh, nor is she actually part of the Ninja uh, Job Quest series at all, much to my disappointment. I'm not even sure she even gets a mention. Um, I'm pretty sure she does in the, ninjas, the, the Ninja Quest, but I don't think I recall her getting mentions in when you join the Rogues Guild, um, which is kind of poopy. Although, I will say that the... Uh, once you actually get the ninja job, Krista, you are trained by um, a couple of Doman people. So that's at least good. So there are other people who are obviously trained in their art who help train you. But it, it, it kind of stinks that even Yugiri doesn't even get doesn't even make an appearance through that, which is lame. Oh, she's educating him. Hi, Tataril. What, what? What's I want to do is say hello. What's up, dude? Where's your dad? Where's homie? Oh, isn't that nice of you? You make your own path, sir. And here is our first glimpse of Drunk Bangrid. Don't worry, you'll be seeing more of it. Yeah. He's totally hitting on Mom there. <laughs> oh, hi! Um, Papa Limo, he's taller than you, okay? Dude, he's like barely even taller than me when I'm standing right next to the box he's on. I'm pretty sure he'll be okay. Look, look, there's even like sacks of grain and stuff for him to land on. At least I hope that's grain and not something like cement. <laughs> What's up, dude? Yeah, I'm still a little mad that you tried to stab me in the back earlier, but... Alright, so no smartman around. Let's actually, you know, go take care of what we came in here and for in the first place. Where the hell is Alphano? He kind of just, like, disappeared. I mean, I assume he's still an old, uh, you know, um... Making sure the refugees get from one place to the other in, in peace and whatnot, but... Nothing's been said or heard from of him, like, since. 
He has a habit of doing that, just disappearing. I have been reflecting upon the events which took place during our visit to Vilbrand. If you have a moment, I would share my conclusions with you. Please, bear with me. Yeah, my grandma, she went because, uh, that Sahagan priest apparently gained the power of the Echo? Yeah, what did we learn from that? When the Sahagan elder summoned Leviathan, he employed the power we have come to know as the Echo. Though I cannot well explain the how of it, it would seem he became immortal in so doing. When the Admiral subsequently slew him, his spirit emerged from his lifeless flesh, a consciousness shorn of physical form. Thus transfigured, he took up residence in the body of his minion with the ease of a man donning a favorite glove. Long have I known that the Echo allows one to pass through the walls of a man's soul. But never did I imagine that it could free us from our own flesh, nor less that our souls could then occupy the next corporeal vessel to take our fancy. It was of this that Elidibus spoke. An existence which knows neither cessation nor oblivion. And yet, though the Sahagan had mastered his gift and thereby become immortal, he was by no means invulnerable. As we both bore witness, he was ultimately absorbed into Leviathan. Yeah, that kind of sucked for him. And the import of this observation? If the Asian's mode of existence is indeed the same, it can be inferred that they too are not invulnerable, that they can be destroyed. There exists a legend which tells of souls who are reborn upon the cusp of each umbral calamity, that they might stay the encroaching darkness. Oh? To most, it is but a fairy tale. Yet recent events have given me cause to wonder. Could the legend in fact refer to the Echo? Much and more yet remains unknown. But I am confident that all will become clear in time. For the present, however, what matters is that the key to defeating the Asians may at last be within sight. With Uriange's aid, it is my hope that I shall fathom this matter ere long. Um, hi! Speak of the devil! Oh, I was just about to send for you, my friend. Is Otimus? Um, Mr. Stork, I almost swallowed my gum here, uh, just came running into the room. I'm pretty sure this is big news. Grave tidings from the Charlian motherland, my lady. It doth concern our distant allies, the students of Baldessian. Oh, did we finally get in contact? Something, What's anything? Often? My lady, the Isle of Val, which for many years hath been the Order's home, is no more. What? No more? Whatever do you mean? I relate only that which hath been conveyed unto me by our agents. An etheric wave of the highest magnitude was recorded in the region. Soon thereafter, it was observed that the isle had ceased to be. It is postulated that a magic was evoked. Like in power to Ultima. Twelve preserved. So is it taken by the nothing? Um, is it just raised to the ground like Doma? Uh, elaborate a little bit more here. If there are no other matters, I move that today's meeting be adjourned. Uh, where, where is the Sultana? Or is she just not present at their daily meetings? Right, what are you still doing there, sir? Um, sir? It, it is dark in the room. You've been here presumably for hours? It is done, my lord. I... <clears throat> forgive my impertinence, my lord, but these orders... I am uncertain as to what end they serve. Revolution. I smell trouble, Bruin. So that's 
it for the main story the scenario thingy for patch 2.2 obviously we'll con it will continue on to patch 2.3 but first we have other matters to attend uh, including the discussion we just sort of had so things are a little bit baffling here because what she described is what we assume to be the power of mastering the echo that being you know you know freeing your spirit from your body kind of thing and actually actively possessing somebody else is not that unsimilar to what the Asians do but at the same time it's proven that they're not invulnerable so what does Elidibus stand to gain by telling us this information because what he's basically told us is twofold here but from what we even though we as a character you know don't know about these you know the meetings that the Asians have among themselves what we as players do we know that he's we don't know really where he stands I mean he claims that if we understood the power of the echo basically we would be of one mind meaning you know we wouldn't be enemies we'd be on the same side but his conversation with Nabrialis is is, is kind of a little bit ambiguous because he still seems to be on the side of the Asians but He's certainly still intrigued by us, so is he setting us up for something? Is he going to betray the rest of the Asians? Is he truly a neutral figure? Is he our, like we don't even we have no idea where he stands from us. I mean his information that he's hinted at us is certainly invaluable, but at the same time, um He's obviously got plans for what we intend to do with this information. Um, should we figure it out, which I, which we obviously have, but he's the one who put the tools in the place, and he's obviously testing us somehow. But we, again, we as of yet don't really know um, where he he stands on all that. So uh, we're we're still a little bit in the dark yet, and we yet and furthermore, we have no idea how he got the echo with the the well, so the Sagan priest anyway. Um, how he got the echo in the first place and how one actually masters this power. I mean, assuming that what he did is the mastering of the power, that we don't know either, but we don't know how to use that power, you know, get to that point for ourselves either. So there's still a bunch more pieces of this puzzle here. Um, yeah, and apparently our friends at the students, the students of Baldessian, yeah, headquarters just kind of disappeared off the map again whether it's the it got sucked up by the nothing or something or simply just raised to the ground um we don't really know all we know is just something big happened there and we finally figured out you know they assumed the worst had happened because we weren't getting into contact with them and now we have confirmation that uh yeah uh, some no word on how many are dead or are missing or whatever or what happens now I don't know. So, next time we're going to take a little bit of a break. And we're going to do some little side stories along with this patch. So, thank you for watching, friends. And I shall see you next time.